Well, hi everybody. My name is Josh Hickman, as you noted, and I'm the Tizens Program Manager at the City of Long Beach, so housed in the uh, Public Works Department. So we do have some, um, some updates. We're going to give you some of the background if you haven't been quite filled in uh, yet as to where the study is, and then we'll move into some of the, the technical studies that have been underway over the last year, and then we'll focus on the next steps. So, here. So study goals and objectives, it's important just to frame the conversation in, in the context of the goals and objectives. So, so I'll read through these. The goal is to restore and improve aquatic ecosystem structure and function for increased habitat biodiversity and ecosystem values in the project area. So it's a little bit lengthy there, but basically it's ecosystem restoration. Right? And, and then the objective is to restore the aquatic habitat. So it includes a, a lot of those habitat types that you saw on the previous slide. So there are some constraints and considerations, uh, which, which Seamus had alluded to and we received a couple uh, comments on. So we want to go through some of these, because these are important to frame the context of the study as a whole. So we can't reduce the maritime operational capacity for the port. So this goes to the uh, gentleman's comment there. Uh, this includes the, the U.S. Navy, the Thomas Energy Islands as well. Uh, we also want to minimize the impact to known major utilities, navigation channels, and anchorages. Avoid any increase in shoreline erosion, uh, any wave-related damage and coastal flooding, uh, public infrastructure. So we, we want to really avoid any of the damage that could be caused by any sort of uh, restoration type project. Minimize the impact to flood risk management and minimize vulnerability of coastal areas. So these are all important, important constraints of the study. So, so first up, we have the preliminary working alternatives. And, and you can see here that, that these were a number of alternative uh, groups, which are groups of measures, which we'll get into, developed for each of these opportunity zones. So you can see here on the, on the graph that there's five opportunity zones. And, and then some baseline scenarios were developed for, for this modeling. So those measures that were all based on the objectives are listed here in this column. You can see them all here. And then the five zones are across the top. So, so you can see where is a, a measure going to fit within each of the, each of the zones, opportunity zones. So, so specific here, you've got breakwater modifications are obviously applicable at the breakwater. So, so these were all measures that were included uh, within the study. So next up, we have wave modeling, which was also conducted. Uh, wave models uh, done to determine the wave energy depth and substrate, uh, assess the surface wave effects on infrastructure, and then ultimately the results of this modeling are input into the hydrodynamic modeling. We have, a, we have a little graph at the end to show how all of these models plug into each other, so it'll help shed some of the light uh, as, as we uh, move through it. So the outputs of that wave modeling are plugged into this hydrodynamic model, which is basically a 3D visualization of, of where does the sediment travel and, and where, does, uh, where does it flow to. And then the results of this model are plugged into the habitat evaluation model, so which is abbreviated here HEM. And HEM is the tool that determines the benefits of each measure. And these are really quantified as a, as a habitat unit. So every, every output is, uh, is, is expressed that way. And, and then the outputs from the habitat model are plugged into the cost-effective model. So you can see here the CEICA is uh, really the, the cost-benefit uh, cost type model. So, and this, this whole thing is, is developed by you know, a number of uh, subject matter experts. So, we're getting to the point uh, where all of this gets compiled with the cost estimates for each of those measures and plugged into that cost-effective model. And that cost-effective model basically spits out the best buy plan, or best buy, uh, best bang for the buck, if you will. So, so that's where we're at. That's the progress that we've had to date. And now the next steps are to take those best by plans and we're going to include 
between three and five Best Buy plans as determined through the, the various modeling efforts that we just walked through, and as well as uh, requests from, from us, the city, to include locally preferred alternatives. And those alternatives are, are going to meet the project objectives, including options for possible breakwater modifications. So those, that final array of those between three and five Best Buy plans will all be summed up in, within this draft report. And that draft report is what I had mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that will be released towards the end of this year. So the draft report will include not only all those alternatives, but also the, uh, the draft environmental impact statement and the draft EIR. So, and then, as noted, it's going to include all the supporting documents for, for all of the modeling efforts that have, have uh, been underway thus far. And that'll be released. And then, the, so the public outreach and comment, this is where we could really use everybody's help, whatever, whatever your, uh, you know, your standpoint or whatever your thoughts are, this is really the point in time where we could use everybody to review that draft, comment on it, take a look at thumb through the appendices and, and provide all those comments. And we'll make it real clear. There'll be a, a public outreach uh, ahead of time. We'll have a, a meeting to release that draft. So the modeling is essentially complete. And so there are several, several array of alternatives that can be included, three to five. So if we do three, then that means that two are not. If we do five, then more than three. And so the city is asking the core to make sure that essentially two out of those five arrays that are studied as part of the EIR does include a breakwater modification. But the final array of alternatives that's studied as part of that EIR, that has not been defined yet. So two out of the five alternatives presented ultimately will study if the breakwater only two out of five? Should it be more? Uh, sure, sure. So I think um, I can't definitively answer that question for you today uh, because we're here because this is the Army Corps' annual meeting and we absolutely want to be here. But we're also in the middle of determining which array of alternatives to include in that final array that's studied in the EIR. And some of them include a breakwater modification and some of them don't. What the city is asking for is that as part of this EIR process, there is at least two that, that do consider the I hope we need more than two. To me, you know, planting a heel grass doesn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you both for... Well, well, more, well, how many of those options will include bringing waves back to the Long Beach? Because right now we have to go to a whole other city in order for my kids to play in the wave at any capacity. So how many of those options would include the possibility of waves at the beach? That's a great question, and again, not one that we can answer today. Um, that will definitely be defined as we move forward with the EIR and, and at the end of the year, hopefully. Um, we'll have a better idea of, of what that looks like and what the different alternatives um, allow for the city to benefit. Thank you both for being here. I think what I'm concerned with, and I think I hear this from a lot of people, is we're wondering, originally the Surfrider's intent, and I think Long Beach was to see the effects the break wall would create. And the environment that was here was a sandy bottom and a wetland. And what we're wondering is why it's gone to the eelgrass and the kelp, which is in PV, when that really is not about this environment. And we would like to know, I think we would like it to focus on the breakwater and how that will affect the Long Beach breakwater and the surrounding area, and not all these other things that can completely change it or negate it or eliminate what we really want to deal with. Sure. So, the, as, as many of you probably know, the Long Beach breakwater... The Long Beach Breakwater is a federal asset, so anything that we might want to do with the Long Beach Breakwater would need the Army Corps' involvement. And the Army Corps is a federal agency, and they, so they have a process that they follow nationally. Is that why the Environmental Impact Report was expanded? That is why, that, that is why while the study may have begun as a breakwater study, it has since evolved to become an ESM the East San Pedro Bay Ecosystem Restoration Study because the Corps doesn't study breakwaters. 
they, um, they have several missions, and one of them is ecosystem restoration. And with all due respect, the breakwater is what changed this environment, and that's why it needs to be the focus. Doesn't that make sense? Am I, I'm not a scientist. Thank you for, for the feedback. <laughs> can't call it restoration if it wasn't there before. Yeah. That's, that's a big issue right now for all these restoration efforts that we're having. We're having people create whole new ecosystems, giving people, you know, it's just a point to keep in mind. You might want to call it restoration, but if it wasn't there before, it's a whole new ecosystem to create. It's another change, it's not restoring. <laughs> so, the, the, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what was said earlier, that when we release our draft report that will contain the recommendation, that is where we would want to hear from you with your comments and your suggestions and recommendations, uh, whether or not we have hit the target or whether or not we need to make some recommendations or changes so that we could deliver the, uh, the, the project that is supportable locally. But uh, I, I just want to remind everyone that you know, the project, as you saw earlier, our authority is aquatic ecosystem restoration. So the measures that we develop and the combination of those measures, they have to produce aquatic ecosystem outputs. Now, one of the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the measures, the features that we have, is breakwater modification. So we're going through the analysis right now of whether modifying the breakwater is warranted to produce aquatic ecosystem restoration measures. And that would be one of those uh, 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 analysis that will have the results that you will see as part of our draft IFR that you will get to review. When you say restoration, are you talking about the way that it's used before the breakwater went in, or a different type of ecosystem that wasn't there before. Yeah, so the uh, that's that's you're you're looking at exactly the uh, the sort of habitat that our target for restoration. Were those things there before? <coughs> Were they there? Did we yeah. have oyster beds? So we have. Oh. Yeah, I mean, these are the things that are found within the the uh, the, the area, the area. But not the breakwater. Say that again. So they're found within the study area, but not the breakwater area. Some of those areas. That, that's that's correct. Area. But we are and we are studying the area. We are not studying the breakwater. The breakwater is a feature that could provide aquatic ecosystem restoration output. But that's the whole. The breakwater was the whole reason this thing got studied. And one of the environmental factors, one of the ecosystems that you're not. Um, the breakwater was the whole reason the study got started, and now it's possible that it's eliminated. And one of the one of the environments that's not being looked at is wave restoration, which affects everything else. Yeah, we have been yeah, he's had his hand up for a while. We're having a meeting on that. On your first first slide, yeah, showed the goals and objectives for the project. Said that the goal was ecosystem restoration. Sitting in this room, I'm listening to a lot of people. They would like to have peace front restoration. So since this project was begun as a community initiative, and including uh, this beachfront restoration, wave action, uh, cleansing of the bay as primary objectives, I wonder how that got lost in the translation to this goal, which is only part of what the original goals and objectives for this project were. That's, that's my question as well, the crux of the matter. We would like to see that that be the focus. Be part of it. Great. I think we. I think we've had a, a lot of great questions tonight. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Great questions and comments. Uh, I I also think that the study is ongoing. Um, I know that Joshua and his team, uh, Monica is in the audience as well, working on this daily with the Army Corps of Engineers, and then the city has a number of consultants on board as well, uh, who are all trying to help the city meet our, our shared objectives with the Corps, which is ecosystem restoration, but the city has also been very clear from the beginning that water quality improvements are also very important to us. If we're able to find incidental benefits 
um, as a part of the study, then that would also be fantastic. And through it all, we do need to protect existing infrastructure and operations in the East San Pedro Bay. So I know that's a really complicated, uh, a lot of really complicated components to throw into one. Uh, we're in the middle of it right now. And when that EIR is presented to you, the information will be a lot more synthesized in a way that you can um, hopefully understand better than we could possibly explain to you now since we are in actually the process of synthesizing that and developing the final array of alternatives to include in that EIR that you'll see um, hopefully at the end of the year. So um, we'll take maybe two more questions, but I also wanted to just reframe the conversation that I know there are a number of really great ideas and, and thoughts in this room. All of them I, I encourage you to express um, as written comments to the EIR, but please also understand that we are still in the process of synthesizing all of that data that we've been analyzing over the past year and a half. Yeah. Will somebody in the city has the courage to stand up and say that the surfing days of yesteryear within Long Beach will never, ever, ever, ever return? Last question. You want to vote? We don't want your Those have been considered um, all the way through the different modeling efforts that Josh described and synthesized in a matter that we can all better understand as part of that year. All right, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. So 
that recommendation goes to Washington? Or it maybe will be part, yes. Our, uh, yeah. our uh, report will be submitted to our headquarters in Washington, yes. uh, which will endorse it, and then they will uh, release, it for, uh, release it for national review okay. before a decision is made.